What's up guys, it's TJ and welcome up here to the Fishing with Yak Pack YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over some of the worst bass boat accidents ever caught on camera. Uh, now, seeing some of the ones that I've already seen, I couldn't even imagine some of, the, some of the ones that have happened that have not been caught on camera. So, very valuable lesson, okay? Always wear a, a life jacket when you're in the process of going from point A to point B on a lake in a bass boat. And I might sound like a procrastinator here because if you guys watch any of my recent videos, you see that I just pretty much destroyed my shoulder and broke my collarbone about a week and a half ago on my Can-Am, like my off-road machine. I was not wearing a seatbelt and I flipped it uh, trying to do donuts and for a machine that's not built to do donuts. Anyways, that was a very uh, eye-opening experience for me. So I was like, you know what? The vast, vast majority of you guys are fishermen, not off-road like walk like people so let's let's uh let's bring awareness to something that probably needs more awareness brought to if that makes sense before we get started into the video though one last thing go ahead and make sure you're subscribed and you hit the thumbs up on this video also but while i give my arm like another uh or collarbone i should say and shoulder i don't know why i keep saying arm and elbow collarbone and shoulder while i give that another week or so probably seven or eight days to heal up for sure good enough to be able to go out there and fish and throw a bait cast or spin around whatever uh, drop some comments down below. What kind of videos like this do you guys want to see over the next seven or eight days or so? Love you guys. Now let's get started. So anyways, uh, rolling at clip number one. This is the, the, when I had this video idea, this is the very first one that stuck out to me. And that's the University of Florida's bass fishing team. I believe it was in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And they were just driving the boat. And it just, I think it was the, uh, something with a, a cable or a rod or something snapped on the, the motor or the mount or something and it just i mean shot them sideways and it violently threw them out of the boat thankfully it didn't knock either one of them out and both of them were wearing life jackets because that could have been like catastrophic <laughs> So right here you can see how long these guys were actually in the water and uh, neither one of them, like I said, neither one of them were knocked unconscious or anything like that. Uh, I believe there were no, I don't think they got injured in any kind of way, maybe some whiplash or whatever, but dude, thank goodness for the, uh, I think it was in, a call, a, like a collegiate FLW type tournament or whatever. And they do like very serious, like extensive checks. You cannot leave. Uh, like when blast off you cannot leave unless they see that you have your uh, kill switch you know tethered to you and active uh, and then obviously you have to have your uh, your life jackets on um, I don't know if it's a rule or not I don't do a lot of tournament fishing that's something I want to kind of dive into this year a little bit more like kind of go goofy fish a couple tournaments and then serious fish a couple tournaments but anyways um, I don't know if it's a requirement to wear your life jacket uh, from point A to point B, but uh, this video right here just goes to show, uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, this was a newer bass boat. This is just one of those freaking nature type things. Like anything can happen to anyone at any time. Uh, obviously, I, don't live your life being scared about everything. Cause then you, you know, just don't, <laughs> it, you get no enjoyment out of life if you live being scared like that. But being scared and being smart are two, you know, completely different things. So. Wear your life jackets, wear those kill switches. Something, ah, this, any, oof, that was, that was a rough one. Anyways, let's roll the, uh, the next clip. This clip right here, I believe, is Skeet Reese, and uh, they blasted off, uh, like, a, he was, you know, in his hometown, I believe, something like that, fishing a local tournament, and a guy in front of him either hit a wake the wrong way or something happened with the boat, something like that, but you can clearly see him like you see what's not, not what like it's not supposed to look like it's just a boat wreck and um sling's got it luckily uh this dude you know, skeet reese uh you know it could have been anybody but luckily there was someone behind him and he wasn't like you know the last boater to go or something like that because there's no telling what could have happened if that was the case like I, it, I gotta imagine it does not feel good getting ejected and thrown from a bass boat at 50 60 or 70 miles an hour when you hit the water from like jumping off something at like 50 feet 
you hit the water and it like it hurts. And I can't imagine running 50 or 60 miles an hour and getting thrown out of basketball. It's crazy. Anyways, let's roll the clip. couple things I want to uh, highlight in this specific clip right here. Uh, Skeet Reese and his partner, I apologize, I don't know who that is, uh, they did a very, very good job at staying calm and keeping the uh, the local angler here that you know had the boat accident, they did a very good job of keeping him calm as well. The first question they asked as soon as they pulled up, because they only saw a boat halfway tipped over in the water and one angler, is, are you alone? And the guy, you know, obviously he's in shock, I don't know what he said, but you know, Skeet knew he needed you know he didn't get an answer so he's like are you alone are you by yourself uh and then it kind of brought that guy back too once he realized like okay there's help here i'm safe my boat may be totaled but a a boat can be replaced and you cannot so uh again he was clearly wearing his kill switch he had his life jacket on uh which both of those combined or one of the other uh saved his life that day 100 percent for sure also, if you notice, I don't know why the boat flipped over. To my knowledge, I've always been told that, uh, specifically by uh, Trey, you guys have seen Trey in a bunch of my videos, especially earlier in uh, like the middle of 2021 and soon to be, again, I'm about to go up there and do a lot of fishing with Trey on his boat and stuff like that. But Trey explained to me that bass boats are not impossible to sink because nothing's impossible, number one, but nearly impossible to sink. Like they're very, very hard to sink. I actually, I don't know the any further part of this story i don't know if this boat sank or if it just sat upside down until Seto could come get it i don't know if, would it be called Seto in the in a lake that's really not lake toe i don't even know anyways thankfully the dude's okay i mean rip to the boat but uh boats can be replaced like i said anyways uh let's roll on to uh clip number three all right this next clip right here is actually on a lake that i fished before I uh, made a couple videos on it in 2021, like spring and summertime, uh, and that's Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia. Uh, absolutely beautiful lake. One of the one of my most favorite lakes that I've ever fished. One of the most beautiful lakes that I've ever fished. Also one of the deepest lakes that I've ever fished. I mean, this water is just stupid deep. Uh, and I don't know, it, it sketched me out, right? So you can see the wake, you see all the wake, and then he just gets like I'm, if I'm a co-angler in this tournament or whatever, like I'm saying something to the boater, I'm like, hey, you really like, you're freaking me out, bro. You're a little too close to the to the bank right there. I don't know what happened. I, I have no idea what happened to this guy's boat right here, but he literally jumped the bank, like went from probably 40 or 50 feet of water and was riding the bank for a second. I don't know. It looks like he took off. You know, he he made sure all his rods. You'll see that in a second. He made. He made sure all his rods and everything were good to go and took a breather and was like, all right, well, wake up call for the day. Now uh, now I need to probably not be as close to the bank running or, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it was from the wake of the, the other boats that had previously passed by. I, I don't know. It always sketches me out riding a boat because I'm always scared something like this is going to happen. I don't know why. I just <laughs> literally always am. You guys should have seen it when Norm and I took his uh, brand new boat out. Like the day he, or the day after he got it, uh, last December, the Guggen's at the Guggen HQ. Uh, we took his boat to uh, Lake Amistad or Lake Arlington or I think it, one of those two. Anyway, <laughs> or Sam Raper, something, I don't know. And we were out there just mobbing in Norm's boat and I was terrified the entire time. But uh, anyways, uh, thankfully this guy's okay. This situation could have been a hundred times worse, a thousand times worse. I mean, it could have been bad. The boat could have flipped over on top of him, uh, and pinned him in, you know, five to 10 feet of water right there off the bank. I mean, it, it could have been, it could have been catastrophic, but, uh, thankfully everything's okay. looks like the guy's boat was okay. So, uh, we're all good there. But, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and roll on to, uh, the next clip. What are you drinking? Diet Pepsi. Yeah. 
Anyways, so this clip right here that you guys are going to watch is uh, actually pretty insane. Uh, they do have their life jackets on, but they do not have the kill switch in. And you can actually see the co-angler or the boat partner or his buddy, whatever it is. You can see the passenger starting to do like this, which means, hey, you need to go around the left side of this buoy uh, or, more, or channel marker or whatever it is. Uh, not the right side and they made that last second turn. I'm not sure why just judging by like the distance I know camera angles can make things look kind of goofy and cattywampus, but the The distance at which it seemed he had to make that turn It seemed like it was one of those things where he was messing with his graph and out of the corner of his eye He could see his buddy doing like that and then he looked up and just overcorrected. I don't know if boats work like that That's just kind of what it seemed to be uh, but it was insane. So again, didn't have their kill switch in, and you can see uh, like how long this thing goes, and, and it just the boat just circles and circles and circles. And let me just tell you, Savage of the Year award goes to my man. I'm almost positive that it was his boat. Another boater came by, seen what happened, seen what was going on. You can clearly tell when a boat's out there in the middle of the lake doing donuts and there's nobody in it. Hey, something's wrong. The boaters are probably in the water. So. It looked like another boat picked the guy up and drove side by side in circles when this boat is doing 20 miles an hour in donuts and the dude jumps from the one boat to his boat shuts it off and then towards the end of the clip you can see here where he's got that uh, moment of realization and reflection where he's like dude that could have been bad like we could have definitely not walked away from that either of us uh, to my knowledge though both those guys are are fine Probably a little bit of whiplash getting thrown out of a boat at 60 miles an hour because, again, like I said, probably doesn't feel too great. All right, so this is a clip that I personally have seen before on, uh, I think I've, I may have watched it on YouTube before, probably seen an Instagram clip of it, most likely a TikTok. Uh, this is one of the most, like not most, but one of the more viral uh, boat accidents, and this was the worst boat accident of uh, this entire video. So this guy's name was Greg and uh, apparently he had just got a new bass boat. Luckily he was wearing his uh, life vest and he had his kill switch on, uh, like on and connected how it's supposed to be. Uh, and dude was just mobbing in his new bass boat all day long. Just getting a feel for it I'm sure and just having fun. Uh, anyway so he comes up behind this boat, the camera boat or whatever. He's got his friends out there helping him record and uh, he hits the wake of this boat the wrong way and it sends him completely airborne and then sideways and that's not how any of that is supposed to work at all like if a boat is coming at you this way or if it's going straight this way and then goes airborne and now is like this but still going this way hits the water it's not gonna hit it, like 10 out of 10 times it's gonna be bad so you can see here where it ejects him out of the boat and it looks so it looks honestly like when it like jolted him down it looks like that's kind of what knocked him out right there uh, which is a good thing he was wearing his life vest because his life vest, again, saved his life. It turned him over in the water where he would be face up uh, and be able to breathe while he was unconscious. So, so going through the list of Mr. Greg's injuries right here, cracked sternum, broke ribs, bleeding around the sternum, nearly broken neck, and collarbone. I don't know if the collarbone was broke or uh, nearly broke, but let me just tell you, that does not feel good either way. Uh, this one is by far the like harshest uh crash scene uh on this video here and you can just see when he's i'll play the clip back but you can just see it when he when it whips him when that boat goes airborne turns sideways lands how a boat is not supposed to land so imagine you're going this way you're i'm coming straight at the camera and then i'm instantly airborne and now my boat's like this and then now that's just not how like anything physics like it does not work like that so so you can see where it jolts him down and i think that's maybe what initially knocked him out because you can see as when he's flying out of the boat uh number one thankfully he was wearing his kill switch now, i don't know drop a comment down below and tell me for sure i don't know how kill switches work specifically like when that thing activates does it just like lock everything up to where does it you know not turn at all the you know the, the prop and stuff because when it slings him out of this boat it dis or it engaged his kill switch or disengaged like it just disconnected it right so his kill switch he was wearing it right and it you know the life jacket and the kill switch saved his life this day for sure 100 percent but uh you can see when he is ejected from the boat he lands behind the boat and you're not going to go that far underwater with a life jacket that fast like the 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 time it took for that boat to turn and for him to be out of the boat in the water he was probably right there beside the prop which 
again, could have been far more catastrophic than than it was, uh, you know, that list of injuries that, that I just named off. But thankfully, he's, he's you know, other than that, he lived. So, um, you know, dealing with a couple broke ribs and, you know, the sternum thing and, you know, the collarbone and stuff, like, I'd rather, you know, have to deal with that and be alive than, than the other option. But uh, holy freaking smokes. Boys, when you're out on the water, wear your life jackets, wear your kill switches. Holy smokes. Like, seeing this stuff, and then I guess it's more eye open for me now because I had like a an experience. I guess I guess you should say being you know just acting goofy. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just I didn't have a seatbelt on in my Can Am, and it really opened my eyes because that could have been a lot worse. Like something as simple as like a rollover in a Can Am without wearing a seatbelt could have been a lot worse uh, for sure. Like I mean I mean also you never know. Like you can clearly tell. Like, especially the, uh, I think it was the third guy, let me see. Especially in the third clip with the guy that got a little cl uh, too close to the bank. Like, uh, major props to him because he's probably done that 100,000 times. Just as confident as he was. It just, all it takes is that one time to slip up. But anyways, appreciate you guys watching. I love all y'all. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. I love you guys. We'll catch you on the next adventure. Peace. Do good, do great, and they talk bad on you. No need, no face, because they're not factual. no, no. no. I won't stay too long here, I'm just passing through I might hit the bank and get a bag or two My mama asked me why you got that cash room Second you switch up, they might get mad at you No, you're not my friend, so no, I'm taxing you